Hi, my name is Stella Luna, and what is yours? Hi, Stella Luna, is that right? Did I hear that? What a great name. I'm Brian Elder. How you doing? Um, so this video is going to be shared with bridge artists and others connected with bridge. Also, I work for the Minecraft Tribune, so... <laughs> um, what inspired you to make your art? Well, there was a day in 1965 when uh, I uh, was in my upstairs bedroom in Crescent City and I looked out the window and I'd been doing watercolor before then and uh, I had the choice of either doing my, uh, my math homework or painting a, painting a watercolor of a thunderhead and I, I saw this gigantic thunderhead and I started drawing it and I started painting it and my dad, who was kind of a meanie, came up to see if I was doing my ma my uh, math homework or not. He looked out the window, he saw the thunderhead, and he saw that I was painting it. And I said, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm painting the thunderhead. And he looked at me for a minute and he said, good choice. <laughs> so at that point, I was really kind of set, you know. Uh, more recently, when I adopted uh, a little boy, maybe about this time of year, he and I were bicycling through Roner Park, and uh, the fog was coming in. There were, there appeared to be nobody in any of the houses. A lot of the doors had been left open. You'd hear the TVs blaring through the open doors. Uh, it seemed like the whole place had suddenly been deserted. And he was riding the back of me in a child seat. And he kind of pulled my, pulled the back of my my uh, my shirt like this. You know. And he goes, Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. I said, What? What? He said, Are we lost? I was kind of like. Oh, and I said, no, no, we're not lost. You know, we go past another couple of blocks of houses, doors open, you know, no one in the houses, TVs on, everything else. And then, <laughs> tug, 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 and he says, Daddy? And I said, what? He said, are most people lost? And then at that point I thought, I have to be an artist. <laughs> so that's as good as it gets. Uh, how, do you, how long have you been in Bridge Arts, and what do you like about it? Uh, I've been here for six years. At this point, it's a very nascent community. Uh, we, hi, how you doing? Come on in. Um, um, uh, your job is to kind of stand out of the way and like, make sure you're not blocking it. Just kind of so, so if people come yeah. through, okay, please. Um, um, it's a nascent community. I've been in uh, a lot more full-fledged communities. I worked uh, at a place called Hunters Point for a bit. I had the studio there for like you know years, and before that, I had a live-work studio at the Vulcan. Uh, before I came here, I had a live-work studio in Point Richmond. Uh, there was, although Point Richmond seems like a good place, there's no sense of community. Uh, uh, Hunters Point has almost too much of a sense of community. It's established. It's, you know, it has all these things going on that kind of indicate that um, uh, uh, it's been here forever. So, uh, Bridge is completely new uh, and uh, a lot of people don't realize that they're creating this. That they really are. That everything they do is uh, something that will kind of determine how other people interact with with uh, uh, them and how they interact with each other. Okay, So the newness, the nascence of it is something that appeals to me deeply. Okay. What do you like about being an artist? Well, let's see. Let's, uh, let's see if you can follow me out here a minute. Let me, uh, let me read from the words of Father Guido Sarducci. He says, how would you like to sit around all day drinking espresso coffee with your friends and talking about stuff that you know absolutely nothing about? If the answer is a yes, you would like to do these things, perhaps you should become an artist. You get to wear old clothes all the time. And if you don't want to talk to anybody, you can say to them, hey, I don't feel like talking to you right now, I'm an artist. Because you see, that's what artist means. You can do whatever you want to do. Right here I got a chart that that's the rising times of the various occupations. Doctor, 6.30 in the morning, you have to get up. No thanks. Lawyer, you get to sleep maybe 15 minutes more, quarter to seven. Engineer, 7.30, big deal. Uh, 
But artists, on the average, they don't get up to a quarter to noon, even better than priests, 10.30, 11 o'clock. Looks like I missed the boat to here, but you don't have to. You can become an artist. All right? All right. Here. Okay. Yeah, watch out for that. Okay. Anything else? Yes, one last question. Mm -hmm. um, what is your favorite piece of art in here and um, why? My favorite piece of art is the one I haven't done yet. Okay. Can you show me around and talk about this art? <laughs> Can um, you show us around and talk about some of your favorite pieces? Sure. Can I take it off? Here's a print of something that I did when I was in Kauai on the last day on, a, on kind of an all expenses paid uh, thing. Uh, and uh, this tree here actually was, was quite large. It's a mango tree. And uh, I, I decided to cut to make it smaller. You, know, you can do that if you're an artist. Uh, because it was in the way of Kong Mountain, which stands behind it. You know, I was actually right there painting all of this. And I heard this rustle, heard a rustling around in the mango tree and uh, these guys uh, uh, after I'd been there for maybe half an hour this guy comes up to me and says hey hey what are you doing and I said I'm painting a painting he says painting a painting what's that like I said do you ever go fishing he says yeah I said well sometimes you catch your fish and sometimes you don't he says yeah I said well that's what it's like with painting and unfortunately this painting wasn't done yet and he said to me I want to show I want to show this to my sisters. I said sure, and so he brought he brings these three women in from behind the tree, and as they look at this painting, they turn from fairly ordinary looking human beings into the women of Gauguin, and I'm just kind of thinking to myself, why in the hell am I doing landscapes, <laughs> you know? And then he says, and he comes out and he says, hey hey, I want to give you something, man. I want to give you some. I said yeah, okay, fine. And he comes out and he's got like eight mangoes. He says, which one do you want? And I point to the one in the center. He says, you picked the best one. You know, and then he says, one more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Can you wait here? I said, yeah, fine. I'm painting this painting, dude. I'm not done. He said, okay, okay, okay. You're painting the painting. That's good, man. He said, he said, let me go and get somebody. And he comes out and he, he, he brings this guy in and he says, this is my great grandfather. And he wasn't lying. The guy was old as you could ever imagine. And uh, <laughs> the guy looks at me and he says, oh, yeah. He says, yeah, you're from the mainland. I said, yeah, the mainland. He says, you got the crazy weather over there. You got that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, and I looked at him and I said, snow. He says, yeah, snow, that's right. You know, so um, uh, it was just, it was kind of like by doing this, I was able to like kind of meet Hawaii. That was the deal. That was what it was all about. And uh, you know, when you get to do something like that and wind up doing something uh, plain air that looks pretty damn good, you know, um, you know, then you're, you're rocking, you know. So, yeah, okay. Um, uh, let's see here now. Uh, this is one of uh, many that actually started this thing. Uh, uh, how this happened was that I actually won an award for a piece that, that sits behind you and I was in, invited, very firmly invited, to uh, come to Yosemite and um, uh, uh, essentially come to Yosemite and, and uh, accept an award uh, for my work in the Yosemite Valley in the middle of winter. And uh, my uh, girlfriend and I had a chance to walk around the valley and there was nothing else like it. It was just unbelievable. There was actually more snow in the valley at that time than there was here. Uh, there was quite a bit of snow and it was difficult walking but but the scene was just absolutely incredible a lot of green a lot of white a lot of gray you know not very much of anything else pretty amazing so uh, that actually those paintings inspired me to pick up painting again and and do a lot of it before then I'd been a muralist and uh, being a muralist is kind of like like going to the public and saying what do you guys want to paint and they'll go, someone will go, well, I want unicorns. 
and someone else will go, I want to show the struggle of the people. And other people will say, I just want some leaves and some flowers. And you have to figure out a way of doing the right thing for each and every one of them. So in some ways, although I got paid large amounts of money to paint mural, and there's nothing like painting a mural, nothing like going to, growing up to someone and say, I'm going to paint on your wall right now. <laughs> nothing quite like that, you know. Uh, nonetheless, what you wind up painting on the wall is very compromised, very watered down. You have to have what you're on fire for. Otherwise, you're wasting your time getting up on the scaffold. What did so you I found win an award for? I'm sorry? What did you win an award for? Which well, turn, turn your camera over here. Okay. Uh, uh, in, uh, in the late 1990s, I was uh, doing uh, work involving uh, uh, etched glass, and that's a piece of etched glass in the center. There are one, two, three, four, five layers in that. And uh, the uh, first layer is this piece of double etched glass. Um, I really like the poetry of Walt Whitman, uh, and uh, this is like kind of the, the key thing from Leaves of Grass. It's spelled out in alphabet soup letters below that. Some of the letters have fallen off, but it says, I believe a leaf of grass is no less than the journey work of the stars, okay? And uh, they just ate that up. This one, this went, uh, I got an award. I got two awards for it, and it toured the state, uh, which actually is something you don't want to do ever with the piece of work as delicate as this. I sort of had to rebuild it since I brought it back, but nonetheless, it you know, uh, a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened because of it, and a lot of things happened to me as a result too. Uh, it's been quite a wild ride. Some pieces just sit there. Other pieces, like as soon as you make the piece you realize that the journey is really not over, and that's a piece like this. Okay. So the piece with the car is kind of a little bit different than some of your other stuff. What's the story? Well, uh, not really. There's a bunch of, um, you know, um, uh, here's the deal here. There's, uh, uh, my dad lived in the, in the southeast part of the state outside of Barstow, and Barstow looks exactly like the countryside that you see in the back here. But you see these advertisements for things all over the place. Um, he lived on, uh, he lived just off of the old Route 66 for years, and the Route, route 66 was just really just incredible. It was just uh, the coolest thing about it was that like uh, if uh, you had an abandoned something, they would never build over it. It would just stay abandoned. You had you had abandoned drive-ins. You had abandoned motels, you had abandoned signs, you know, and they would just stay there. And it was just, I, a lot of people were kind of like, would just kind of ignore this and kind of go, well, you know, what's the meat of the situation here? Can't we do something besides that? You know, you know, how about a rattlesnake or a road runner or a vulture or, or something or an old, you know, or 20 mule team borax or something like that. But this was like, I just really fell in love with the advertisements and, uh, I really decided that I wanted to have Coyote driving car. Looking back at an advertisement, I did it three times. The first time I did it, I sold it almost immediately after I after I did it. Uh, like the paint was still wet, and the guy said, oh, "I'm taking it." I said, "Fine, no problem. If you got the money, sure. <laughs> it's no extra charge for it being wet, pal." You know, um, and I did it again, and it failed, and. Then I decided I was going to do it like this, and I was going to do it a lot larger and, and uh, make a better car, you know. So that's kind of what happened. Um, uh, the woman taking her clothes off is was kind of an extra added um, inspirational piece, inspirational motif in that. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. And have a nice day. You too. Thank